A car suddenly braked behind the boy and scared him to shake. Ice cubes fell to the ground. The rich guy in the car kept scolding him and asking him to move out of the way. Red was very anxious but could not pinch the ice cubes. He could only kick the ice to the side of the road. But the ice on his shoulder fell to the ground again. The rich guy looked at him and laughed. But he didn't know that his collision would change Red's life forever and make him a billionaire. Red's family was so poor that they couldn't afford to eat. He sighed during dinner and said he wanted a change of taste. So his dad handed Red his bowl. After all, a change of bowl is a change of taste. Red takes out the newspaper that the rich kid threw down and points to a story in which he tells his dad that he'll be a rich man too. Dad scorned his idea, he said Red would only become a lowlife. After all, that's what his father taught him. Was that really the case? Red looked sadly at his sick mother. He decided to go out into the world. In the middle of the night, he picks up his bag and tries to sneak onto the train. But a man picks him up halfway. Red tried to leave, but the man wouldn't let go of him. He kept looking out until the train slowly moved. Then he took Red and ran away. The security guard noticed something was wrong and saw the two of them and chased after them. But Red was pulled onto the train a second before it picked up speed. The man was riding into the air on the train. He explained that it was making a gratitude list. Red thought it was ridiculous. How can there be so much to be thankful for? Then they arrive in Texas. He jumps off the train and follows a passing worker who sees a rancher coming to recruit. Red seizes every opportunity to prove himself. He even lifted up a big fat man. There was no reason for the rancher not to pick him for the job. His job was to build a barn, but that didn't make much money. Late at night, when others were playing cards, he was reading, but he couldn't read either. He went out and asked the farmer how he could become rich. The farmer says there are many factors to success, but first you have to become a bellwether. That night, Red got up at 3 in the morning. He organized the workers and put them in teams of free to do their jobs. As a result, the workers were much more productive. The farmer was so impressed that he gave him all the money he had saved. When he was done working, he was walking the streets of Texas. He happened to fall in love with a girl at first sight. He couldn't say a word in response to the girl's enthusiasm. Hannah also liked the handsome young man and asked him to dance. Red, after the dance, begins to pursue Hannah. This boy is too smart. He heard the principal's disdain for him and asked the girl to test him. 56,679 times 61. 4,457,400. Hannah took a long time to figure out the answer and said it was absolutely right. The principal is dumbfounded. He returns to school after Hannah's efforts and starts to work as a student. At the same time, he also falls in love with Hannah. But it doesn't last long. As the fires of World War II stretched across America, Red says goodbye to Hannah and joins the army. He didn't miss a chance on the front lines of the war. When the officers asked someone to deliver a letter, he grabbed it and ran away. He was blown up in the battle, but fortunately he had comrades to help him. When Red returned to Texas, after much hardship, he married Hannah. In 1955, Red heard that there was a huge oil field in Texas that was being tapped like crazy. So he stayed out there every day from morning to night. He stayed with the drilling rig he had bought with all his savings. His rampage even scared off countless workers, but he didn't dig anything. He was so frustrated that he came home and met his son. He ignored his son's invitation for him to play ball. He ignores Hannah's anxious face in the kitchen with her little girl in her arms. All he does is complain that he can't dig for oil. Hannah explodes and asks him to look outside at his son's lonely figure. Rat is silent, then goes out of the room to play with his son. The son said he wanted to ask an expert to teach him how to play ball. Red had an idea in a flash. Although he couldn't find the oil field, someone could find it. The next day he hired an expert to survey the field. They finally dug up the oil with the expert's advice. When Red came home covered in oil, the family was in a frenzy. Red hugged Hannah and spun her around. This oil field could extract at least 50 million barrels of oil. With a barrel of oil selling for $2, he could make over $1.000 a day. He could finally take his wife and son to a villa and live the good life. Just as he was about to make his mark, he received a court summons. It turns out the farmer, who had sold him the land was jealous when he heard the well. Field had been dug. The farmer took Red straight to court and wanted his land back. Instead of panicking, Red made a phone call. When the call came through, he said he needed to bring a lawyer to court next to day and hung up. The lawyer didn't know anything about the court date other than that it was going to happen. This was definitely the fastest trial to end. 
This lawyer looked at Rand's previous contract without knowing anything about the case. The deed was recorded exactly two years and two months. Texas law says that the statute of limitation of mineral rights dispute is two years. The farmer couldn't argue and it was as if he was hearing a lot of money saying goodbye to him. Red recognized Hamilton's ability and hired him as his exclusive attorney. In 1968, the auger was installed everywhere we could see on the land. Have you ever seen a family like this? Mom and kids eat together, but like strangers. Dad comes home every once in a while, and all the kids do is ask him for money. Hannah was upset about it, but Red gave the money right away, and said he had to buy a refinery on a business trip. He digs up an unlimited amount of oil, and starts moving towards refining. His business dealings were not good. After years of success, Red had changed. He became rude, rude, and arrogant. Despite Hamilton's repeated reminders, it didn't work. The refinery's former owner said he'd think about it. He thought about it for days. Red stayed at the hotel with Hamilton, doing nothing. On Christmas Eve, Hamilton went home for the holidays. Red refused to go back and was waiting for news. When the original boss brought Red the contract, he said this. He knew Red would wait for his contract until Christmas, because Red reminded him of him 20 years ago. Red didn't understand, but it didn't matter. He's a billionaire now. He was a little confused when he saw the news at the airport. He took out a pen and paper and tried to write down what he was feeling. But then a phone call interrupted his thoughts. Hamilton had been in a car accident on his way home. Hamilton's internal organs were so badly damaged that he lost both of his kidneys. They are still waiting for a kidney. Red walked into the hospital room and looked at his old friend with mixed feelings. At this moment, he finally understood what his former boss had said. He once again took out a pen and paper and wrote about friendship, family and even a dog. These are the things he left behind in his pursuit of money. He overheard Hamilton's blood type, so he ran out and contacted the doctor because he was eligible to donate and wanted to give Hamilton his kidney. He lay in his hospital bed and thought about it a lot. When Hamilton asked him how he felt about becoming a billionaire, Red said he had always dreamed of this day, but when it did come true, no one even shared it with him. Hamilton advised him that it wasn't too late. His family is his greatest asset. After Red was released from the hospital, he held a family meeting and said he would set up a foundation to help the poor. The kids were incredible. They had become cold and selfish under the influence of their father. Red gave each of them $10.000 and wanted to see what they would do with it. But in the end, only the youngest son returned the money to him. He said he had enough money to give it to the foundation. This youngest son is the heir to the Red estate. Jason closed the journal in a trance. He was Red's grandson. Jason has been so busy since he took over the foundation that he doesn't even have time to eat. He had to earn money and deal with his greedy uncles and aunts. Jason was able to find time to go out with his girlfriend. But then he gets caught up in a courthouse flyer when he proposes. And then his life is filled with endless meetings and court dates. And he has no time for his girlfriend. When she left for a foreign country, he felt a great deal of remorse. It wasn't until he looked up his grandfather's journal, he realized that the love of his life and his family were more important than money. With the help of his grandfather's friend, he dropped everything and went to find his girlfriend in a foreign country. When she asked him in surprise what happened, he said he had taken a leave of absence for himself. His girlfriend is his fortune. He will become a real loser if he loses his girlfriend. This movie called The Ultimate Life was released in 2013. How much money do you need to make in your life? In this short life, there is nothing that cannot be obtained through personal efforts, except for that person, except for that love. So sometimes, when we are obsessed, when we are lost, we might as well look back. Maybe there is a person who is waiting for us silently.